I love being creative. I love exploring with makeup, hair, all this. It's a long process, but it definitely pays off. There's something rebellious about being a cis man and getting dolled up, putting on a wig, walking in the streets and going to my gigs and taking over the space. I think kids don't always know what to make of us. Things like gender are like the last thing on their mind. They look like, um, like mermaids and queens. Are we done yet? Hi, I'm Miss P. I am the drag queen for Drag Queen Story Hour this hour. Welcome! When I first heard about it, I was just like, where can I sign up? And I was part of the first few girls who started Drag Queen Story Hour in New York City. So when I put on my wig on my dress, like, I'm ready to go save the world. How many of you want to be a mermaid when you grow up? For me, I think Drag Queen Story Hour is just such a natural fit. It's like one of those ideas that's just so good that I'm shocked that no one had thought of it sooner. So what do you think a drag queen is? Uh, a queen of dragons. A queen of dragons. Yeah. We really are. We entertain, we lip sync, we are funny. We're like clowns, but prettier. And I get to hang out with people like you. Isn't that awesome? Yeah. Yes. Story time at a Brooklyn Public Library prompting a protest this morning. And it's who is reading to those children is what parents are upset about. We have a drag queen, which is a man dressed as a woman, coming to read to children, not about cat in the hat, about gender fluidity. I like to invite them in to see before they judge a drag queen story hour. I love my wet shoes. I think there's just something about us being larger than life and that's really what they react to. You get a lot of oohs, ahs, wows, and what's that? <laughs> to kids, I think, you know, drag queens are princesses come to life or superheroes. One of the kids said, a drag queen is someone who dresses fabulous, fancy. And I was like, oh, you correct. You're correct. Kids, they're imaginative. They're all about play. They haven't been baked into, you know, society's norms and expectations. So I think to them, things like being fluid with their identities comes really naturally. They're setting a great example as being different, and there's nothing wrong with that. When I had my own son, I started going to these story hours at libraries, and I'm just, I had my kid late in life, I'm queer, so to suddenly find myself in these really straight environments was fine, but I was like, what would this be like if this was queer? And I was like, drag queen story hour. Julian is a mermaid by Jessica Love. From the stars in the sky to the fish in the sea. And Yulan felt love. That book I love and adore tremendously. That book goes through variations of animals, people, shapes, color, sizes, and all that, saying that it's okay to be different and stand up for one another and kind of in bullying too, in a way. Like how they read different types of books every time. Like sometimes they read books about feelings, sometimes about nature, sometimes fiction, sometimes non-fiction. But I just like how people in the books find a way to stop any war that might happen. Not only queer families needing queer-centric event to bring their family to, but so many straight families who are progressive are always looking for ways to introduce their kid to the larger world and raise children that are thoughtful and that value diversity. She loved it. She's never sat through a story time before without crying, and there was so much shiny stuff to look at. All of my kids have this flair for drama and really enjoy theater and dressing up, and I want to encourage that. What? Rainbows in the sun. I think a lot of people don't understand the difference between sex and gender, and they think that we're teaching three-year-olds about sex. They already 
already have their rights. But they don't have the right to take my tax dollars and impose their doctrines on little kids and get them all confused and screwed up. The kids are all messed up. We need things to stay just the way they were supposed to be. The kind of change we need is for people to start listening to the creator. That's what we need. Zero to five years old. Literally the sign says zero to five. About gender fluidity. Can you tell us about what's happening outside? Well, apparently there's some guy who wants to date me and he doesn't know how, so he's flirting through negativity. No. Um, <laughs> there's some backlash of people who are against the program and um, would like to see it shut down or not see it at the library at all. It's the second protest we've had in New York City in three years, but lots of the organizers in other places have hundreds of protesters at all their events. I had a death threat over social media, which was not super serious, but a little scary. Um, and you know, some of the right-wing media has picked up on it. This is a societal wrecking ball to destroy any semblance of normality, any semblance of basic human biology. And I'm sick of it! I'm tired of it right now! I can't handle it more now! And the thing that I don't know, it scares me the most is just like in our crazy gun culture that like I'm sort of afraid, you know, that of what could happen if some crazy person came to one of our events. today I saw all the kids loving and cheering after every book. And what do you think the pigeon wants to do now? Drag Queen should go on and never stop because I think it's a really cool program. Shoes on the drag queen go stomp stomp stomp. I believe that hate isn't inherited it's taught so if we can teach these kids how to love and accept everybody, they'll definitely be the best generation that we could ever ask for. People associate drag queens with adult entertainment, so they think if it's a drag queen, it can't be appropriate for children. And we have to really often explain to people, this is a program designed for children. It's a drag queen reading children's books, singing children's songs. There's nothing adult about it. The itsy bitsy spider went up the water spout. I think often it's hard for people to just kind of get beyond their preconceived notion of what a drag queen does. We're not trying to pull people to be drag queens. There's some things that I would never perform for a child, and there are things I probably would never wear in front of a child, but that goes for anyone with any profession. The seats on the bus go swish, 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 all through the town. I was just talking to these girls downstairs. None of them asked me, you know, am I a boy? They had a lot of questions about how did I get my hair to be purple, or how do I get glitter to stick to my face, or where did I get all these clothes? But, you know, they just kind of take me at face value, and I think that's really exciting. How she added the sea creatures and makes it extra, extra pretty to me. Do you know where you want to be when you grow up? Um, I want to be a lot of things. Number one, scientist. Number two, ninja. Number three, writer. Oh, that's amazing. And I believe you can do all three of those things, okay? Just make sure you continue on with school and don't let anyone ever tell you you cannot do it, because you could do it. Okay, high five, Dylan. <laughs>